What's happening y'all? Dom here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. Welcome back to the channel. So let's just cut straight to the chase and talk about what we're going to be doing in this week's video. It's an ISO performance and exposure recovery test of the Canon EOS R3, the halfway almost mirrorless flagship Canon body that we are all so desperately waiting for. But that's fine. The EOS R3 is still a phenomenal camera, mostly in the stills realm, but also the video specs coming out of this thing are really good. That flat 6K Canon Cinema Raw and Cinema Raw Lite profile shot internally in this thing at a super high bit rate, along with a whole bunch of other great just Canon video tools that we all have come to know and love. So we're gonna check out the ISO performance test first, where I go through the entire range of ISO values the EOS R3 is capable of. And I'm gonna do this in and out of log, in Canon C log three, and also in Canon's neutral color profile, so we can kind of see what the difference is there. Then we're gonna jump over to the exposure recovery test where I am gonna get in front of the camera and we're going to drastically overexpose and underexpose the image coming from the R3. And I actually did that test in the neutral profile, the C-Log3 profile, and in a Cinema Raw light mode. Because I was super curious if that Canon Cinema Raw light profile was gonna have like as much play and latitude in post than like the full Cinema Raw profile or just like any other full Raw profile. So super curious about that. That's going to be at the very end of this video. So with all that out of the way, let's jump into these tests. All right, starting out with these ISO performance tests, we are on the EOS R3, obviously, in 4K UHD 24P in the All Eye H265 MP4 profile. I did all the tests in this video in this profile except for the Cinema Raw light test at the end, of course. And we are outside of Canon Log here in the neutral color profile. And this does have a very slight grade on it. It was just too magenta and warm coming out of camera, so I just corrected that, but no changes to exposure or anything. And also, and in these tests, there is absolutely no in-camera corrections going on in the R3 for aberrations, high ISO noise reduction, or exposure, or anything like that. So the lowest ISO value out of Log is 100, which is looking super duper clean. 200, of course, looks amazing. And I might skip over some values just because there's a lot and some don't matter. 400 looking perfect, and I believe this should be the base when we're outside of log. 800 looking perfect, and pretty much on these values, you're not gonna see anything unless you're looking in that 300% zoomed in window there. So jumping over to 1600, there was definitely a little bit of jump in noise, like I said, if you were looking in that window. Same with 2000, very, very clean at 2000. Slight jump to 2500, but again, this is really only apparent if you're looking in that zoomed in window. 3200 is looking excellent, considering a lot of cameras start to fall off at 3200, but again, whole scale of the image is looking really good. If you really strain your eyes, you'll start to see these shadow areas dance around a little bit. Little jump in noise to 4,000, but again, still really well maintained here. 5,000 and 6,400 are also looking excellent. The noise is picking up, yes, but it's really, really well maintained. 8,000, we are stepping up a little bit for sure, but still looking super, super good at 8,000. I'm very impressed with the R3 so far. 10,000, it's picking up still on the whole scale, looking really, really good, but now you can start to search for some of those like problem areas. Like I notice that little patch of grass gets kind of weird and also the light fall off from that light bulb in the corner. That's an area to keep an eye out for because it always gets lossy and weird. 12,800, I say this is where it starts to get like textbook noisy. Like I look at this video and I say, all right, that's like a little bit noisy, starting to fall apart a little bit in those problem areas, like I said, but honestly, still pretty passable and I would like to see what a little bit of noise reduction could do to this video. 16,000, again, the noise is definitely present here, but it is far from being distracting and it is like honestly walking that line of being like a pleasing amount of grain that you might want if you were going for that type of look. It's still very neat and it hasn't affected the color yet one bit. 25,600 is our highest ISO value outside of log. Well, it's actually the highest in log too, but it looks super, super good. Yes, there's a thin layer of noise across this whole image pretty much. We're losing a little bit of image fidelity on like the whole scale and we've definitely had some detail loss 
in the shadow areas. But honestly, I'm looking at this, and if I was watching like a nighttime exterior from a television show or a movie or something like that, this is what it looks like a lot of the times, and this looks great, and there's no chroma noise being introduced in this noise pattern whatsoever. Maybe very, very marginally some green tints going on, but the color is maintained very well. All right, moving on to this ISO performance test, but now we're in the C-Log3 profile. And I actually metered this test at one and a third stops overexposed in camera, because that's just gonna be a lot friendlier and clean up the log image a lot more. So in log, we have a couple of low ISO values before we get to the first regular value, which is the base. 800. And I usually find it helpful here to start with this flat video image and then fade into the graded image. So all of the low values here are looking impeccably clean. There's 100, 125, 160, 200, all looking super clean. And, and these get like really granular and there's like a lot of values down here, but they space out a lot after this. 320, everything is looking crystal clear in the low values. 400, 500, and 640, looking super duper clean. Those are the last of the low values. And now we have 800, which is gonna be the base ISO in C-Log3. And again, a stop and a third overexposed in camera is doing a lot of good things for this image. This is virtually noise-free at 800 here. 1250 looking great. 1600 is also gonna look really good. If things looked really good outside of log, I'm gonna go ahead and say things are gonna do a lot better in this slightly overexposed log test. So 2000, looking immaculate. 2500 noise is starting to jump the teeniest, teeniest bit, but really only gonna be a problem in those shadow areas. Four thousand and five thousand looking perfect. Again, things just always get a little bit weird where that light falls off from that light bulb in the bottom right corner. All right, sixty-four hundred. The noise is obviously starting to jump a little bit, like on the whole scale of the image. But check out how crazy the noise on that little royal blue square in that color checker chart is getting. It's going way crazier than any other value. That could definitely be distracting. At 8,000, that is getting significantly worse, very distracting, and even creeping into some of the other blue ranges here. But otherwise, just like regular noise, except for that weird blue noise going on, it's still quite impressive. The noise is very neat and contained, and other than that weird blue thing, there isn't a lot of color shift going on. So given that, 10,000 ISO looks immaculate. 12,800 is also looking seriously good. If you were exposing like a nighttime exterior or just any very darkly composed image, you could get by at this ISO value. 16,000 is looking so good. There are still parts of this image that are absolutely noise free, really not even into the midtones yet. At 20,000, the whole image is still looking amazing. But now a couple of regions of this chart are starting to pop out to me a little bit. But still, this looks really, really good. And 25,600 is our highest ISO value in C-Log. And finally, right here is when I'd say this video is like textbook noisy. All right, moving on to this exposure recovery test in the neutral color profile. So outside of log here, I'm going to be in the base ISO 400. So I'm going to incrementally underexpose the image from this R3 up to five stops underexposed. And then on the right there, you'll see the corrected image. One stop under two stops under, three stops under, four stops under, five stops under. Okay, moving on to the overexposure test where I'll do the same exact thing, but overexposed. One stop over. Two stops over. Three stops over. All right, moving on to exposure recovery in the C-Log profile. And this is going to use the same LUT I used in the ISO performance test, but I shot the ISO performance test metered at one and a third stop overexposed. This is correctly exposed in camera. So let's get started with underexposure. 
one stop under, two stops under, three stops under, four stops under, five stops under. All right, let's move on to overexposure, one stop over. Two stops over. Three stops over. Four stops over. Five stops over. Now, like I said, I was really curious to do the same exposure recovery test in the Cinema Raw light profile. So a little bit different image size here. We have a flat 6K DCI ratio of 6,000 by 3164 pixels. So let's check out underexposure first. One stop under. Two stops under. Three stops under. Four stops under. One stop over. Two stops over. Three stops over. Four stops over. Five stops over. And that is pretty much gonna wrap up this ISO performance and exposure recovery of the Canon EOS R3. And I was definitely pretty impressed with how the R3 handled that exposure recovery test for sure, especially that last Cinema Raw light test that we just saw. So, as always, if you have any questions about any of the tests or gear we checked out in this video, you know what to do. Bust out your ancient roll of papyrus and ink quill and write me a long, eloquent letter and send it to me by Raven. And that will just be a much cooler way than starting a discussion in the YouTube comments of this video. But I guess you could do that too. Also, if you happen to like this video, you can hit that little thumbs up button down below here to let me know that you liked it. It's also gonna let YouTube know that you liked this video and it's gonna bump it up in ye old algorithm, which would be perfect timing because we just reached 98,000 subscribers on the channel. We're gonna need every single extra sub that we can get to get to that crucial 100,000 subscriber milestone and get that awesome silver plaque hanging up on the wall back there. So with all that out of the way, take care people and we'll see you in the next one.